Bitcoin's also the apex property. You could think of it as cyber Manhattan, 21 million blocks in cyberspace with appeal to 8 billion people worldwide. What if everybody wanted to live in cyber Manhattan? The top competitor in the property market is New York or London or Paris or Tokyo. And if you owned a city block in New York in the last 100 years, you probably made a lot of money. But the problem with owning buildings in New York is you have maintenance cost, depreciation, zoning risk, property tax, physical nexus. You can't move the building from one city to another city. It's immobile. It's illiquid. And if you want to sell or buy the building, you have to sell it all at the same time. And it's very expensive to do that and it takes a lot of time. So Bitcoin uh, improves on that by creating a building that's indestructible, immortal, immaterial. You can scale it. You can buy it $37 at a time. You can move it with high frequency. It's portable. It's global, universally desirable. And, you know, it's, it's like owning a building, but if you're going to own a building in bonus eras, why wouldn't you have a building that you could teleport to London, Paris, or Japan when you needed to and sell it? It's just much better idea. So Bitcoin is better property than any kind of physical property. But Bitcoin's also the apex technology, right? It's a bank in cyberspace run by incorruptible software. It's open to everyone on earth. So you could think of it as digital finance. Um, and the top competitor in technology is Apple. Apple's the most valuable company in the world, but right behind it is Google and Microsoft and Amazon and, and big tech is an obvious good idea. But what if I could actually have a digital monopoly that's global that everybody wants, but without the management team, without the employees, you know, right now people want to unionize Amazon. They're talking about unionizing Tesla. Well, you can't unionize a company that has no employees, that is no company. The management's never going to screw up if there is no management. You know, you've got corporate taxes and tariffs and product cycles. You know, we're on the iPhone 15. You know, what about the iPhone 37? Will, be, will that be the one that you want? Because Bitcoin in 100 years is going to be 121 millionth of all the money in the network. So the product was set a decade ago. It'll be the same 100 years from now. It may be the same 1,000 years from now. So getting rid of product cycles and and getting rid of all the liability risk that comes with corporations, uh, you know, is a big upgrade for Bitcoin. And what you do get is this global network of holders. You get uh, legal and ethical superiority because, you know, a commodity is always superior to a security because there is no issuer. There's no management team to mislead you. You can, you don't have to trust. You can verify yourself. And there's really no operating risk or execution risk because it's just running itself in a timeless fashion on a global basis. So if you like technology, then Bitcoin is the apex technology. But some people invest in money. And what's the top competitor? The sovereign debt, right? A bond. So the US Treasury bond is, you know, is the treasury asset for most corporations, most governments. There's hundreds of trillions of these bonds out there. But Bitcoin uh, is digital money. And so it's a non-sovereign bearer asset. It serves the value of a bond, but it doesn't have systemic inflation or counterparty risk or mandatory custodians. And it doesn't have the real problem, negative real yields. If the monetary inflation rate is seven or eight percent and the bond pays five percent, the after-tax yield is two or three percent. So we mean, it means you've got a negative real yield of five percent which means your money's going to go away. It's going to be cut in half every 14 years. And that's and every bond, every sovereign bond has a negative real yield in every country always. Hey, money talkers, we're diving into the crypto roller coaster that's taking Bitcoin to new heights. Buckle up because Bitcoin just smashed through $44,000 and we're about to decode the crypto frenzy. This is Money Talks, where the finance party never stops. Bitcoin is on fire, soaring past $44,000 like a crypto superhero. In the last 24 hours, it's up over 4%, and in the past week, a jaw-dropping 15%. We're talking Bitcoin reaching its highest level in a hopping 20 months. The crypto vibes are electrifying and we're here for it. Why is Bitcoin on this electrifying joyride? Well, it's got some major backup. The big players, the institutions, the buzz around a potential spot ETF is sending shockwaves through the crypto realm. Major U.S. financial firms are tweaking their ETF applications, and everyone's eyeing the SEC for the green light. But that's not all. 
Expectations for Federal Reserve rate cuts in 2024 are adding fuel to the crypto fire. Fed Chair Jerome Powell hinted at a slowdown in spending and crypto is soaking up the optimism like a sponge. Now let's consult the crypto oracle, Jacob Canfield. He's predicting a Bitcoin fiesta until the ETF gets the thumbs up. Picture this. Bitcoin hitting $48, $50,000, stealing the spotlight while Ethereum plays the supporting role. Altcoins are gearing up for their grand entrance after Bitcoin's dominance takes a breather. Layer 1 coins, ag tokens, and gaming projects are polishing their shoes for the party. Canfield's advice? Ride the Bitcoin wave for now, identify projects in sync with it, and get ready for the grand altcoin spectacle. And there you have it, Crypto Mavericks. Bitcoin is rewriting the rules, smashing records, and gearing up for more. Let's continue our discussion with Michael Saylor. Um, Bitcoin, on the other hand, is again, is digital. You can self-custody it. It appreciates much faster than fiat, and it allows you to escape the local currency risk. So, uh, and it's the longest duration asset. You know, a bond could be 30 years, but Bitcoin is forever. Bitcoin's a thousand year asset. I mean, it doesn't expire. Companies don't last a thousand years. Buildings don't last a thousand years. I mean, I guess the closest thing to something that might last a thousand years is a bar of gold, but gold isn't scarce. You know, when the Spanish came to the New World and the conquistadors stole all the gold from, from South America, they brought it back to Spain, they created massive hyperinflation and tripled the supply of everything and crashed their own economy in Spain and the rest of Europe. So there's always been inflation, even in gold on the gold standard, because it's not scarce. And now a lot of talk about the ETFs coming. Bitcoin's going to be the Apex ETF. You could think of it as a global monetary network. It's the first ETF that's based on a synthetic asset with an absolute fixed supply that also has global appeal. It's competing against the S&P index, the Spider, SPY, and it competes against some other monetary ETFs like GLD or BOND or the NASDAQ index. But Ultimately, Bitcoin is destined to rise above them as the global index because it doesn't have asset inflation. All these other indexes have asset inflation. If you buy billions of dollars of the S&P index, it cranks up the, the stock price of all the companies in the index. They issue more equity. They basically dilute their own stock, right? And so you're always going to create more of these things. Bitcoin's the only ETF and the only index that is absolutely capped. And if you combine that with the global brand appeal, the lowest investment risk, the best growth drivers, the best tax treatment, right? The longest holding duration, what you've got is the winner. Um, Austrian economist would think of this as the world's first engineered sound money. Um, and, um, you know, Austrian economists have been looking for sound money. It used to be people thought gold might be sound money, but as I pointed out, gold was an imperfect attempt at sound money. We have never in thousands of years ever actually accomplished perfect sound money. Um, Bitcoin is the first monetary asset that is not intrinsically defective. That's a big sense. Think about it. It's the first non-defective asset People will build, if you double the price of real estate, they'll create more. If you double the price of a stock, they'll create more. They print more fiat currency. They mine more gold, but nobody can create more Bitcoin. So this is a big idea. And so here we get to the orange pill moment. I mean, the reason you want to go and orange pill everyone you know is we finally have an asset, Bitcoin, the world's for leading. It's the leading scarce, desirable, portable, durable, maintainable asset. If you remember... You know, where I started in this presentation, I said, if you don't want to lose the economic war, you need to find something scarce, desirable, portable, durable, and maintainable. We found it. Now, most people think they're too smart to just buy Bitcoin. They, they want to be brilliant investors. You see it all the time on Twitter. Everybody's giving you a trading idea, an investment idea, an altcoin idea, a stock idea, something. But I'm here to tell you that most investment strategies don't work. If you look at um, the returns on the S&P index, if you, if you held um, a portfolio of stocks for 30 years, you would get 7.8% return. 
if you missed the best 10 days or one day every three years, you get 5% return. If you miss the top day each year, the best day or 30 best days, you get 1.6% return. And actually, there's only 50 days or basically two days out of the out of the 30 years. And if you missed the right ones, then you got no return. You lost all your money. So you have to guess which two days each year are going to perform or which day each year is going to perform in order to actually out trade the market. And nobody's that smart. The United States District Court for the District of Utah has expressed concerns that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, is making materially false and misleading representations in its lawsuit against a crypto firm. The court has ordered the securities regulator to show cause why it should not be subject to sanctions. Ryan Armstrong, CEO of U.S.-based crypto exchange Coinbase, stated that Bitcoin could play a role in extending Western civilization. For Armstrong, Bitcoin represents an alternative to fiat currencies like the U.S. dollar which people can use as an alternative to inflation. A senior director with Moody's Analytics has highlighted the biggest driver behind the recent Bitcoin price surge. The race is heating up to launch spot Bitcoin exchange-traded funds, ETFs, he explained, emphasizing that large asset managers are getting ready to acquire the underlying asset to offer the ETF to retail and institutional investors. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing.